everyone. So in material science and engineering, there are a lot of books that you can choose from. And these textbooks are typically very expensive. So I've decided to make a series of quick introduction uh, videos, very short videos, to introduce uh, several important books in the field. And uh, we're going to go over the table of contents briefly, and I'll um, turn the pages so that you can see the main content inside. So hopefully that will help you to decide whether you want to purchase the book or not. And I would like to start the series by introducing this textbook about material science and engineering, an introduction book by William Callister and David Rathwish. So this book has come to the 10th edition. And of course, my copy is an instructor evaluation copy. And if you purchase it, you can either buy a hard copy um, for general usage or a digital version from Wiley Plus. So that's the publisher here. So if you are studying material science and engineering um, at any institutions, most likely this is the textbook that you will be introduced during your freshman or sophomore year. Right? So um, I've only seen another version, uh, the uh, another textbook different from the Kelsey book that's used for um, civil engineer students. But for most material science and um, engineer students, either from UIUC, MIT, or uh, Virginia Tech, um, we are using this textbook. All right, so these two professors are from the University of Utah and University of, uh, of Iowa. And if you turn through the pages, you will see that in the acknowledgments, actually, there's the Norman Darling. Uh, this is one of our colleagues here at Virginia Tech, uh, also uh, contributed to um, the writing of the book. So this book is really uh, the very useful introduction course. It starts from introducing what is material science and goes through the atomic structure, the building blocks of all the materials, and then to move on to the structure of crystalline solids. So in this chapter three, um, the book talks about all the definition of crystallinity, unit cells, uh, phase center cubic, body center cubic, hexagonal, and how to define them. You know, the crystal graphic points, directions, and planes. Very useful for uh, determining the uh, the HKL index of planes or the UVW for directions. And chapter four talks about the defects, vacancies, point defects, line defects, dislocations, uh, volumetric defects. And then on chapter five, we talk about the diffusion, fixed first law, fixed second law, and then moving on to mechanical properties, how to quantify stress and strain. Uh, chapter seven talks about dislocation and strength in the mechanisms, followed by failure. That's all about mechanical properties, actually, three consecutive chapters. Then moving on to the thermodynamics, chapter nine talks about the phase diagrams. Students will be introduced uh, to concepts such as binary phase diagrams, the iron carbon phase diagrams, very useful. And then chapter 10 about phase transformations. You'll have all these non-equilibrium phases and um, also different microstructures that can be formed uh, during the um, TTT diagram from the TTT diagrams of the iron carbon system. After that, uh, we'll have the processing of metals, and then this is also a very important chapter, chapter 12, about the structure and properties of ceramic materials. They are processing. And chapter 14 talks about polymer materials, how they are used, categorized, and processed in chapter 15. And then moving on, the rest of the textbook typically cannot be covered throughout one semester. So it depends on whether uh, your institution has a separate course for this. And anyways, these are very good reading materials if you're interested in uh, the other topics. So chapter 16 talks about composites, and this is also one of my favorite chapters about corrosion and the degradation of materials. Electronic properties, thermal properties, hope you can see it, magnetic properties, optical properties, and environmental societal issues. And then that would be it. So this textbook, typically we use it with the Wiley Plus uh, platform for homework. So. Here is an introduction of the platform Wiley Plus so that you can either purchase a digital copy or the hot copy. And then the Wiley Plus platform has a lot of um, automatically graded homeworks or assessments. So if you have the hot copy, you'll have um, the colorful printout. And in each chapter, there is a lot of case studies, the failure of lifted ships. And um, the Ashby Plus is also something very useful for material selection. And at Virginia Tech, we use CS Edupack so that students get practice about uh, material selection. Chapter two about atomic structures. I'm going to, not going to go through every page, but just to scan through a few important pages so that you can get uh, a sense of what the book has to offer. Chapter three, uh, also a very important chapter, how crystallinity was discovered uh, through X-ray diffraction. Definition of unit cells, lattice structures, how to define directions and planes, and the principles about X-ray diffraction. Very, very important, right? So, um, imperfections. Okay, so I will just go over the whole books really quickly. 
it tells you how to determine uh, the different types of defects from point to line to area to volumetric defects. Diffusion, very useful for materials processing. The mathematical equations, fixed first law, fixed second law. Mechanical properties. This chapter is going to talk about everything about what is stress, what is strain to how to measure stress strain curves. In addition to that, there is hardness test. Chapter 7 about dislocations and strength and mechanisms. Defines what is a slip system and Schmidt laws. So what is the Schmidt factor? And then the microstructure evolution during heating and annealing. Failures, three failure types, fracture, fatigue, and creep. Okay. Choppy impact test, as in curves for fatigue. Creep behavior of super alloys and then phase diagrams. What is level rule, right? how to determine the microstructure during cooling, either equilibrium or non-equilibrium cooling. What is eutactic reaction? Or well, the very important iron carbon phase diagram. What is a prolite, pro-eutactic cementite, and many more. Right? So, and the phase transformations, the mathematical equations for nucleation and growth. And the rest of the book is like this. will have the problems at the back of the book. Some review questions on problems. Properties of materials. These are very useful tables.